Atlas has a lot of well-loved games in their repertoire, particularly their JRPGs. But there are also a few non-RPGs they've made, including a very stress-inducing Surgeon Simulator. Trauma Center Under the Knife was released in 2005 for the Nintendo DS. The game says the setting takes place in the city of Angeles Bay, which sounds like a fictional version of Los Angeles. However, you can see that there are some background images that look distinctly Japanese. I guess this is the same place where Phoenix Wright practices law. The character you play as is named Derek Stiles, a rookie surgeon who just got hired at Hope Hospital. Here, you'll perform various surgeries on all sorts of patients with a touchscreen, with a plethora of tools and techniques at your disposal. These range from your basic scalpel and sutures to state-of-the-art antibiotic gel. This antibiotic gel is also a healing item in Persona 4, which means that the Trauma Center games take place in the same universe as the SMT canon. I guess. You'll be walked through the steps of the first couple of surgeries, but it won't be long before you'll be expected to know the basics by heart, such as making sure the skin is sterilized before cutting into your patient. You'll also be working against not just the clock, but also your patient's vitals, which you can increase with a shot of some stabilizer. And while having a time limit does make sense, it can get kind of silly when it's possible to fail an operation because you didn't slap a bandage on quickly enough. That's probably going to be the least of your worries though, because completing the operation in a timely manner while making sure your patient doesn't die is a lot more difficult than you'd think. Particularly, your movements not only need to be quick, but also very precise. Even the slightest inaccuracy when pulling out a foreign object, or not cutting perfectly against the dotted line, could screw you over and cause your patient to lose a few precious vital points. There's also a few operations where you'll be under less than ideal circumstances, and you'll have to adapt accordingly. You'll also be given a score at the end of the operation based on your performance. Eventually, you'll discover that Dr. Styles is no ordinary doctor. He soon learns that he's gifted with a healing touch, an ability that's said to originate from Asclepius, the Greek god of medicine. The healing touch puts you into a sort of bullet time, which slows things down for a few moments. It can be an enormous help when things get especially tricky. And it's because of this gift that Dr. Styles transfers to Caduceus, a world-renowned medical organization where he works with some of the greatest minds in medicine. To be honest, the story kind of reminds me of Ace Attorney, except you're playing as an Ace Surgeon instead of an Ace Lawyer. Both stories focus on the past and the protagonist's feel for their respective career fields and the struggles that come along with it, along with some pretty crazy turn of events. Dr. Styles even has a female assistant by his side. It would definitely be quite the event if their paths were to ever cross. And it would still be one of the less strange crossovers Phoenix Wright ever got involved in. It's soon discovered that there's a mysterious new plague called Guilt, a parasitic disease that was created by an evil organization called Delphi. Guilt also comes in many variations, which means you'll have to change your plan of attack with each of these new forms. Also, fuck this variation in particular. It's called Trite, and it sucks. I was just barely able to cure it the first time, but the second time was absolute hell. Maybe my fingers or brain are just too slow for this variant, but no matter how much I tried, I just couldn't get past it. So eventually, I said screw it, and moved on to the next DS entry, Under the Knife 2. One of the first differences you'll notice is that there's a difficulty selection, which can be changed at any time. And yes, I did change the difficulty to easy for some of these operations, just so I can actually finish the game without taking an eternity to do so. Although while easy mode is definitely easier, particularly with how the patient's vitals don't drop as quickly, I would say that's still reasonably challenging. It still took me a few tries to complete some of the late game surgeries, even on easy mode. You could even play on hard difficulty if you want to further torture or challenge yourself. Besides new difficulty levels, there are a few other changes in the sequel. The graphics are improved some, and there are a few new gameplay mechanics, such as putting someone's bones back together like a jigsaw puzzle. The controls are still quite picky, but the suturing seems a bit more forgiving in this one. Guilt has also reared its ugly head once more, and a rival medical organization has made an appearance as well. But at least you don't have to deal with Trity again. Trauma Center might just be one of the most frustrating games I've ever played. I guess I sort of expected it considering this is an Atlas game, but I was still pretty surprised at how tough it was. And while I do enjoy challenging games, this one really tested my patience, to the point where I just plain gave up on the first one. 
I'd even say that it's more frustrating than fun at times. And yet, I still found myself coming back to it, even after hours of trial and error. And that big sigh of relief after a tough operation never failed to feel immensely satisfying, especially when there's only a few seconds left on the clock. While Trauma Center isn't the first surgery simulation game, it's probably one of the most interesting, with an exciting story to go along with its tough gameplay. While the series seems to be another entry in Atlas's Forgotten Games, that shouldn't stop you from giving it a look. Thanks so much for watching! If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click like and subscribe if you want to see more.